Let's take a walk through Banana Land. I would like to explain to y'all today how growing bananas work. First, we'll stop by our black cap raspberry bush. Look at this, very happy. I remember when I planted just a little cutting. Ah, uh, the banana patch. Bananas are the staple of our food, of our diet here in Costa Rica. And if you've never had a local, tropical, unique banana variety, and you've only eaten Cavendish bananas from a grocery store, you're really missing out because these fruits are completely different from what most people think of as a banana when you eat bananas directly from the source in a unique variety. For instance, this variety is called Namwa or ice cream banana. It's got a fluffy cloud-like texture um, and the flavor is just completely different than a Cavendish banana. Keep walking to show you some more varieties. And I'm gonna teach you how bananas work because when you bite into a banana, there's no, it's never full of big seeds that you plant. So you might be wondering, how do you get all these bananas on your farm and how do you start growing them? Wow, here's the start of a banana flower. So a rack like that begins by the plant when it reaches about a year old popping out a flower, and then the rack appears from there. All right, so I want to show you and explain how bananas work. First, oh, look at this rack. What a beautiful example. There's the flower down there being pollinated, and here are all the ice cream bananas popping out. Okay, so the way our banana patch was started is you go to a farm that already grows bananas, and you get what are called ijos. Here are the ijos. These are little banana shoots which come out of the existing banana plant. Now, bananas did used to have seeds at one point and just through not genetic modification in a lab, but just through uh, breeding, um, we bred the seeds out of the bananas. Now, there's a certain point that I'm, of kind of a meta, well, how did we get it from bananas being full of seeds to not having seeds? I'm not 100% educated on that, but all, all we know now is that bananas that we grow, these good varieties, are not full of seeds um, through years of choosing the banana plants that have the smallest seeds and then only uh, continuing to breed those. Wow, look at how many ice cream bananas are in these racks. This is insane. All right, so now we can just agree that bananas have been bred to have little to no seeds, um, but people have been growing bananas. So you go to a banana farm or patch, someone that has lots of bananas going, and you actually take these little shoots, which are clones to the bigger plant, they're all connected by the root ball. And you actually cut off the top leaves of these little one foot tall plants. You take a shovel about six to eight inches below the ground level, and you will dig up this little clone, which at the bottom has a little root ball the size of your fist with little roots coming out of it. Now, if you dig under there and take out this little banana shoot, from a farm or even from our farm here, I can dig that out, it takes two seconds, put it in a hole, plant it somewhere else, and that will start uh, the next location where this banana will begin to produce. So you first take these little clones, these little shoots, and you can plant them all around. Now from there, the plant roots, it starts to grow, and then it turns into a big banana plant like this. And in about a year, it'll get big and tall enough, about 10 feet, and then it'll put out a flower just like this. And then as that flower opens, it'll turn into something like this. And then eventually you cut off the flower and then they start to uh, get fatter and riper like that. And then once you cut 
the rack off and you're ready to harvest the bananas, this big original stock will never produce a rack of bananas ever again. And so what you do is you actually cut the big plant all the way down there at the base and it'll topple over and that can be used as mulch uh, for, for just to enrich the soil. But you never lose this little patch because even though this stalk will never produce another rack of bananas ever again after it produces one and you cut it down, in the meantime, over the past year of it getting bigger, it has created all these little clones. They just naturally come up. Every few months, a new one comes up. So if you look at the base of all these banana plants, you'll see so many stalks. But in each location, I only ever planted one of these clones, one of these ehos, and just over time, they produce all these clones that keep shooting up. Now, if you leave all the clones there, each individual little baby will one day be the biggest stock and put out a rack. Or, as I said in the beginning, you can dig it out and use these clones to spread your banana patch out and grow even more bananas by replanting them. Or you can just leave them right there. And so it's a regenerative process. This is the biggest and oldest one. It makes a rack. You harvest the rack, cut down the big plant, and that sends the energy, look, to this guy, the next one. And then it'll produce a rack and then you'll cut it down but then the next clone will be big and produce bananas does that make sense so that is how it works you get a banana clone an iho from a farm you put it in the ground and it eventually it will grow and create its own clones and that is how the world of bananas works so you're never planting seeds you're just uh spreading genetic clones all around um and takes about a year from planting for them to start growing and then it's even faster because look this guy's almost ready but in like maybe two months its next biggest clone will be ready and then two months later the next so after you've had the bananas in the ground for like a year and a half or two years each patch each little location will really start to produce a rack every couple months because the clones are just getting older and coming out in such abundance Oh, bananas are the best. Uh, I want to start getting into using the banana stalks because, you know, I said you have to cut down the stalk because it only ever produces once. And in the inside of there, there's some really hard, strong fibers that you can make clothes and paper and all kinds of products from. So bananas are just incredible. We freeze the bananas, eat the bananas, dry the bananas. You can make banana vinegar. So many things that you can do. We love banana life. We grow apple bananas, datil bananas, gros michel, which is like the most standard, ice cream banana, plantains, and yeah, about five varieties of bananas. And there's so many more. There's red bananas, um, an infinite amount, really. And you just have to go around to the best farms that have the most unique varieties to find them. Gosh, do we love our life here. Um, Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any more questions about bananas. Maggie even likes bananas. And if you want to come live on our farm, we got a cabin to rent. We got a guest house to rent. Uh, many opportunities for you to enjoy our Pura Vida lifestyle. Learn a little bit about sustainable farming and homestead living. And enjoy life out here in the tropics. Enjoy your bananas. Peace.